All right, Shalom. Wong. This is Howard One Banyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp, located right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Before I begin, I want to say Kaul Halayim, by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Ha'arakah Kodash, Ma'ama, double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. Shalom to you, Akim, Nakwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. This is Ezekiel 38 and 10. Thus saith Yahweh, power, it shall also come to pass that at that same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought, man. All right. Now, this scripture right here is specifically focusing on the ruler of Russia. All right. Gog and Magog. And today, the, the leader of Russia is uh, Vladimir Putin. All right, and um, if you look at the, the picture in the background, it says, what Putin's watching? Putin is watching, man. All right, not only him, but the reason he's watching is because the Most High has him watching. The Most High has all the attention on America, all the attention on Israel, all right? All these nations are, are gazing at America and Israel. All right. <clears throat> it says, um, matter of fact, I'm gonna get something real quick. Get something real quick. All right, because uh, Putin would be like a modern day king, just like Xi Jinping. They like kings over their nations now. All right, Proverbs 21 and one, the king's heart, meaning his mind, is in the hand of Yahweh, as the rivers of water, he turneth it with us, so ever he will, man. All right, and what happens in the river? It builds callous, or the Lord put mountains or um, land in the way, which turns, the, changes the course of that river, changes the mind of that king. So things that are happening on this earth that the Most High causes to happen they um, move the mind of people like Vladimir Putin in a certain direction that the Lord, that the Most High has commanded. All right, the king's heart, his mind is in the hand of the Most High. You see that? As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will, the Most High's will. Okay. It says, every way of man is right in his own eyes, but Yahweh pondereth the hearts. See, in his own eyes, right? And he think he right, but the Lord said what to Putin? Or the Russians, because they eat the mice as well. It says this, Ezekiel 38 and 2, Son of man, Set thy face against God and the land of Magog, which is Eurasia, which would be Russia today. All right. Um, the land of the Medes, right? The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. So it's that uh, the Kremlin, Moscow. And say, thus saith Yahweh, power, behold, I am against thee. So the Lord is against them too. O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, the chief prince and ruler over that Soviet Union, USSR. That's Moscow, right? Russia. So the Lord said he's against them. Even though the Lord is controlling his mind to do Yahweh's will, Right? It says this, uh, Ezekiel 38 and 9, Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, man. Not only America, but also the land of Israel. Because Putin is trying to get him, is involved in that war now. All right, he's um, allegedly giving commands to back Iran 
Uh, matter of fact, look, check this out. See what it say right here. Russia behind Iranian wrath on Israel. Look at that. Whew, man, Russia is behind that. Because the day before that attack from Iran, where they shot almost 200 missiles, uh, ballistic missiles onto uh, into Israel, attacking the Iron Dome, some some missiles landing in certain places. All right, <laughs> but just like in a boxing match, if you're fighting, you don't want to show. You gotta have that poker face. You don't want to show that you injured or got hit. You know, you can see when somebody's smart smiling, you know you got them because they're trying to hide it. See, Iran striking the Iron Dome and landing some missiles was the first thing Israel and America said. None of the missiles penetrated. But we know that's a lie. All right. He says, Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Okay. And that goes with, I think, Ezekiel 16, if I'm not mistaken. The storm from the east. Um, and thou shalt, yep. And all thy bands and many people with thee. And one of them nations that's going to be with Russia is Iran. All right. I want to see some, show you something. This was a meeting that happened like a day before the actual text. This was September 27th, 2024. Uh, let me see some. Let me see some real quick. Right, it was on October 1st. Iran attacked Israel. So a few days before. Like three or four days before October 1st check this out I can't play it but I'm gonna read it for you it says here revealed so this is Lavrov that dude is a cold dude man that's when he speak he, he'll make you think of them Russians from the movies but they're meeting up they were in once um Israel went into Lebanon Russia showed up over there immediately. R Russian foreign minister, that's what he is. He's a foreign minister. All right. New York, United States. Did they meet up in New York? Anyway, revealed what Lavrov discussed with Iranian and Lebanese ministers. Let's see. So this was the first statement he said. He was saying words, but I just screenshotted it. This is Lavrov from Russia speaking. All right, Sergei Lavrov, Russian foreign minister. It says, I'd like to express our condolences and solidarity, solidarity with the Lebanese people. He said, what? Ezekiel 38. It says, thou shalt come like a storm to cover the land. And all thy bands and many people with thee. So not only Iran, but Lebanon. It's going to be one of those countries. China. All right, I'm going to do another lesson and show how China is going to get involved in that Middle East turmoil. Because of the uh, Persian Gulf. Right? So look how happy he looked now. When he meet in Russia. It says, the Russian, Iranian, and Lebanese ministers discussed the situation all right so it says as hezbollah which is one of the um proxies for iran all right iran has a whole proxy front with different militias in different lands like iraq uh yemen has the houthis uh, uh lebanon has hezbollah you had gaza with hamas and many more throughout Iraq and Syria. I forgot who Syria got. All right, so that's why um, Israel is attacking all these places because those are the, the front men for Iran. And they just attacked, destroyed a, um, a defense base, like an air defense base 
over in Syria, which would stop any oncoming missiles from hitting Iran. So now they destroyed that. So they're making a lane, as I heard some reporters say, they're making a lane straight to Iran. They could attack tonight or sometime throughout this week. Now they, they, they're allegedly aiming to attack their weapons depot, their I mean, nuclear sites, which is, represents the heart of Iran or the oil uh, sites, you know, production sites, which would be a bad move because uh, Iran is uh, a leader of OPEC, oil petroleum exporting countries, plus one, OPEC plus one would be Russia, plus one. And they control the oil market and the petrodollar. And the other one they can do would be the attack, uh, uh, what's the name? The Ayatollah, which is the uh, leader of all of those militias I just said and also they call him like a spiritual leader as well All right, he's over the president so that would be attacking the heart of Iran they said it's going to be painful they want it to hurt alright it says as Hezbollah confirms Nasrallah is, is unalived Putin is ready to enter the Middle East war front look at that Ooh That's calling the prophecy. Ezekiel 38 and 10. Thus saith Yahweh, power. It shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought. Why? Because the Most High is controlling them. Putin. You had uh, October 2nd in Syria, Damascus. See, this was that attack. It says Israel reportedly hit a Russian weapons depot. All right, and I think that's the one that protects any type of um, missiles, projectiles from going at Iran. Now Israel took that out, and it was a Russian weapon depot, and it's in Syria, Damascus, which Syria is an ally of Russia and an ally of Iran. All right, <clears throat> all right. And uh, America's playing, Washington, Washington is playing the hidden hand in this situation. Most of the missiles, that's why France called for an arms embargo, you know, to stop sending arms to Israel. And I believe, according to Ezekiel 38, that France is gonna join Russia. But if I'm wrong, who cares? With that Turkey not so much northern Turkey but Turkey the capital with Erdogan he's in the middle and leaning more towards Russia and he put out um, condemnation and threats of an attack against Israel real soon so all of those Muslim brotherhoods are gonna come together you know that's what's trending <laughs> So Psalms 10 and 9, it says, He lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. That's America, man. It's Esau. They're lying and wait secretly in America. Right? Uh, as a lion in his den. Wow, that goes with um, Nahum. I'm going to have to get that. He lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. Let me get that real quick. Come on, man, because he said, what? Well, he's waiting as a lion in his den. That's, that's, that, that goes with uh, Esau in general, but that's their tactics. But the main one using those tactics is America. Watch this. as laying and waiting, you know, backing up the other lioness, they're, they're, uh, like, like Israel. This is um, Nahum 2. Uh, let's start from um, 11. Where is the dwelling of the lions and the feeding place of the young lions? Where the where even the old lion walked and the lions whelped 
and none made her afraid, right? It's talking about Israel. Uh, is Israelites, all right? Where we where we roamed and ruled and nobody made us afraid. Where is our dwelling at? We scattered around the four corners of the earth. So let's get to the point. The lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps. All right, for his young. All right, so um. Right, and strangled for his lionesses, and filled his holes with prey. In his dens with ravens, man. What's that? That's like a, you got a picture of a lion going out and hunting and actually bringing back in what it went out to conquer and take. That goes with Revelation says ruling over the nations. That's uh, uh, I think Revelation 17 or 18. That's America ruling over many people and he. And, Heapeth unto him all nations and cannot be satisfied. That's in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2. Right? And uh, it says here, Damn, I gotta get it, man. I gotta get it. I gotta get it. I don't wanna get too far from the point, but let me get that real quick. Habakkuk 2. And uh, here you go, Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine. See, America got all his riches and rulership and lands and militias and gave Israel that power. And Israel was able to gain all of its resources and power and influence through America's might. All right. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, through their philosophies, through their business, through their democracy, through dominance. He is a proud man, see, so they became proud. Neither keepeth at home, but they go out from their den, they go out and hunt them and their lionesses, and they bring back their catch and fill up their den with their uh, unalive meat, you know, corpses. Who enlargeth his desire as hell. That's the same thing that America does. They go around the world enlarging their desires and bringing hell on earth, leaving nothing but uh, death everywhere in the path. Neither keep it at home, man. They got bases all over the world. Who enlarges his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, man. That's why they're going into, going after Russia now. you like, no, they wouldn't. No, nah, they can't be satisfied. They want to devour everybody. They want Iran as well. And is as death. The same way death or grave is never satisfied, always taking in more and more bodies. Right? And that's into this, these small compartments, but seem endless into the earth. You know, uh, the bodies. And cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all all people see that so that's the same thing here right here Nahum 2 and 12 the lion which will represent America in this sense today the lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps for his young and strangled for his lioness right would go out and hunt for his lioness and filled his holes with prey and his dens with ravens the victims, man. So that's why Israel is proud because they see what America did in the world. Just like uh, Seneca Rib, um, 701 BC, he sent Reb Shaka, a spokesman, to speak to Hezekiah and his people and say, uh, to Hezekiah's messengers, and he told them to say, uh, uh, look at my forefathers, look what they did. How they conquered all these places, how they conquered the northern tribes and this and that. You see that? Um, it says, the lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps and strangled for his lionesses and filled his holes with prey and his dens with ravens. 
But behold, I am against thee, saith Yahweh of hosts. I will burn her chariots with smoke. In, in the smoke. So all their weaponry is going to be destroyed in Armageddon in World War Three, From Israel all the way to American Sea. <laughs> Alright, so. Behold, I am against thee. So the Lord is against them. Just like the Lord said he's against Russia. He's basically against Esau. And I will burn her chariots in the smoke, and the sword shall devour thy young lions. All right, so all these proxies that are under America, the Lord gonna have them get destroyed over there, even Israel. And I will cut off thy prey from the earth, man. Cut off the influence and power and might from America. Is that Nahum as well? No, that's, I think it's Isaiah. I'm going to get that real quick. He's going to cut off her might. Let's see that. This is um, Isaiah 47 and 1. Come down and sit in the dust. So hide your ass in the corner and sit your ass there and be quiet. Sit in that confusion. Sit in that misery. Because how are you going to go around fighting around the world, but you got destruction on, it, uh, on the home front? O oh, virgin daughter of Babylon, the pure uh, following of ancient Babylon is on this place, man. Wickedness, idolatry, business, folly, destruction. All right, and as is the mother, so is the daughter. So that's why they call this the daughter of Babylon. It says, sit on the ground. So sit on the ground, meaning um, become a third world country. Because of uh, Revelation 17, it says the harlot was sitting, riding upon a scarlet colored beast, being, being exalted. And it's going to be brought down like lightning to the earth. Sit on the ground, there is no throne. So it's losing its influence and power in the, in the world. It's like, yeah, they can do it again. They're going to look what they did in World War II. Who can war against them? Look at NATO. Look at this. Look at that. You know, look what they did in. Uh, Iraq and uh, Desert Storm, right? It says, What? There is no throne. Those that no more influence and power in the earth, no more rulership. O daughter of the Chaldeans, O creation of those Europeans, elites, them bankers, they helped, they established this place and influence. And gave all their might to this place. And America is lending those same resources to Israel. Thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Alright. This is verse 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. So the shame of America and Israel is being uncovered. Through their actions, through the internet. It's being exposed. What it say right here? Washington has already expressed full backing for Israel. So that's World War III. World War III is literally once NATO and Russia lock horns, America being the spearhead for NATO, that's World War III. All right? World on the brink of World War III. Israel vows consequences for Iran after missile barrage. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. So all they're doing in the dark, in the secrets, in the shame of this place, shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. That's why, I put, that's why the title is Putin's Watching. <laughs> thy shame shall be seen, man. All right. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. So the Most High is operating through these people people on this earth like Putin he's sending Yahweh Shai and when Yahweh Shai shows up he said what will I if it already be kindled so the Lord is already showing up his power is in the earth moving things moving the mind of these kings he's ruling from the throne in heaven but when he shows up physically uh, he says what he's not, he's not going to meet thee as a man coming to shake your hand or you can put it back on the cross again your house shot no that ain't gonna happen 
he's going to show up as a mighty warrior angel, glorified mighty angel, son of Yahweh. And when he shows up, he's not going to show up in that civilized, how you doing, shalom. And he's showing up in that fight spirit like a lion to tear. I would say the lion was chased out of the woods and he already, he already roared and warned you. Now he's coming to attack. That's Yahweh Shai, the son of God. All right. So, um, sit, verse 5, sit thou in silence and get thee into darkness. All right. O daughter of the Chaldees, for thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms, the ruler of the nations, man. Putin's watching. He's watching. And the Lord is exposing these devils. So, let me get this real quick. Where was I at? Uh, two, I think. And one. It says here. I mean, two and twelve. The lion did tear in pieces enough for his for his young, for his today for their proxies, and strangled for his lionesses. All right, for their allies. You know, and their and their, their their citizens at home, so they would go out and conquer the world and bring all the resources back to the to America. And filled their his holes with prey with victims, and his dens with ravens. Behold, I am against thee, saith Yahweh of hosts. I will burn her chariots in the smoke. And the sword shall devour thy young lions, all their allies, all their proxies. The sword is going to devour them, the ballistic missiles and all that. And I will cut off thy prey from the earth. So that goes with what I just read in Isaiah where America is going to lose its power and influence in the earth. And we're witnessing that. This is the Lord bringing them low. That's why he said, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. All right, so when things decompose, there's a process. He said, the worms cover thee. You know? So that's a process. And I will cut off thy prey from the earth, and the voice of thy messengers shall no more be heard. The voice of thy messengers. Who is a messenger? What's that right here? Not the picture, but the words. Israel's bid to draw Russia into the Middle East war. Who's the messenger? One of the messengers is Netanyahu. You know? So the voice of thy messengers shall no more be heard in the earth, man. This is a message. What they doing over there in Israel? Look, apparently, this is Lavrov. He said, apparently Israel wants to create a pretext. See, they're creating the pretext for the United States to get directly involved in this war. Directly involved. That's a hot war, man. And the Russians know it. This is September 18th. So it says, apparently Israel wants to create a pretext for the United States to get directly involved in this war. Whew. The scriptures say what? The least among them shall draw them out. All right. So yeah, these are messages that is sent um, it says the voice of thy messengers shall no more be heard man okay so let's go back to Psalms uh, 10 and 11 it says uh, Psalms 10 and 11 or 10 and 9 he lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den he lieth in wait to catch the poor. All right, so the poor really represents Israelites, but they lie in wait also to catch these weaker nations. But now, what does the scripture say? Let the weak say, I am strong. He doeth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. And, you know, small levels, which would be these prisons and jails, courtrooms, but on a bigger level, on a world, on a military scale, 
they go after these proxies or these smaller countries. He croucheth and humbleth himself, these politicians, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. See, now America is using Israel as a strong one. He, he hath said in his heart, Yahweh hath forgotten. He hideth his face, he will never see it. And that's what they did with us in slavery. And even today, the persecution they put on our people, they say what? He will. They think the Most High is not watching. But the Lord is clearly watching, and not only him, but he has the angels watching. He has us watching, and he got Putin watching. Just like we supposed to be watching. Everybody watching. Whew, that's some scary shit. That's like the hills have eyes or some shit. <laughs> Most high is the king of terrors, man. Alright, so let's go to Luke 18. Seventeen. This is Luke eighteen and seventeen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever. No, this ain't it. Eight and seventeen. So lucky. Sheesh. Luke eight and seventeen. It says, "For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest." Right. Yeah, it ain't no secret. Everybody know what they up to. Apparently, Israel wants to create a pretext for the United States to get directly involved in this war. For Luke 8 and 17, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. All around the world, same song being sung. Whoo, you know, so they're being exposed. Let's get that real quick. They're being exposed, man. Uh, Nahum 3 and 5. All right. Let's go to... Uh... All right. This is Nahum 3 and 5. Behold, I am against thee, saith Yahweh. So Yahweh is against America. He's against Russia. He's against all these damn people. But he's using them. There you go. Uh, uh, this is Sirach 18 and 2. Yahweh only is righteous, and there is nothing, there is none other but He who governeth the world. So, who's governing and controlling everybody in the minds of these kings? Yahweh. Who governeth the world with the palm of his hand, and all things obey his will. For he is the king of all, by his power dividing holy things from among from a, holy things among them from profane. Anyway, so so it's the most high controlling everything, and everything is obeying the most high's will. Alright. Nahum 3 and 5, Behold, I am against thee, saith Yahweh of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face. And what's that? A, a, a woman walking up the street, uh, covered, elegant, respected, but then uh, in dignity or whatever. But she gets exposed. And shame covers her. All right. And I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the naked the nations thy nakedness, man. Alright, so the most high gonna show up and just strip her down in front of everybody and throw mud and, and bile or everything from the streets on her. And make her look filthy. Nobody gonna wanna come help this place or touch it. Everybody gonna flee from it. And the kingdoms shall see thy shame. Putin's watching and I will cast abominable filth upon thee see that so imagine a, 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 um, a orish, orish woman harlot 
being dressed and draped and dainties and all that, and then she get knocked off a high horse, stripped down in public, and thrown just like we did in slavery, our, our women, and then throw piss and bile and all kind of shit on her, abominable filth. That's this place, America, man. They're all looking at this place like, damn, it's a filthy ass place, man. And shall make thee vile and will set thee as a gazing stock. Ooh, so who set this place as a gazing stock? Let's see what a gazing stock is. A gazing stock. The term uh, gazing stock, it means a spectacle, a sight to look, <laughs> to watch, to see, also to look down upon. Damn. Damn. All right, Nahum 3 and 6, to look down upon, to despise. That's why I titled this John Putin's watching. With that, I'm going to say, uh, Shalom.